Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Somali National TV and Radio Muqtisho. With me here today is Vili Blasrini, United Nations Assistant Mission in Somalia and also a Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General, UN Resident and Humanitarian Coordinator for Somalia and UNDP uh, uh, Resident uh, Representative for Somalia. Quite a number of, of, of positions. <laughs> Uh, I, I would first like to wel welcome you to SNTV and, and Radio Mogadishu and like to ask you for a follow-up question and what is your role in Somalia? What exactly do you do with these all offices and, 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 and exactly these many jobs in, in Somalia? How your office works? Please explain. Give us an introduction yes. of that. So, thank you very much for inviting me uh, mm -hmm. to this uh, mm -hmm. SNTV uh, show today. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, it's true that uh, the title or the function I have is a little bit uh, long, but uh, let me just explain. In fact, I have four different functions within the United Nations here okay. in uh, Somalia. Okay. One as UNDP resident representative, that means I represent uh, UNDP in uh, Somalia. Okay. I do believe UNDP is an organization well known okay. uh, by the Somalis yes. present in the country yes. for more than 20 years. Yes. As resident coordinator, it means that I'm coordinating and bringing together all the UN agencies, funds and program under one overall program I mean for the country. As humanitarian coordinator, that means uh, I have been tasked and requested to uh, bring together all the international humanitarian community together, which means it goes beyond the UN agencies and it includes also the international NGOs active in the country to respond to the humanitarian needs. Hence, as humanitarian coordinator, I will be the focal point, I mean, for the government and the authorities. Okay. As yeah, deputy special yes. representative yes. of uh, UNSAM, mm -hmm. I'm one of the two deputy of uh, Nicola K, the SISG, mm -hmm. and I'm primarily in charge within the mission of the New Deal and also stabilization uh, agenda since these two components are component bringing primarily all the agencies from the program of the UN in support I mean to this uh, agenda. So to conclude I have few bosses, uh, yes. uh, one on the development side, okay. one on the humanitarian side and one on uh, the mission right. side. Right, great and it's all working together. And it's all working uh, together. Um, I mean today right. you invited me under this uh, for function, right. but in general, uh, depending on what I am doing, I will represent only one of the functions. Great. Uh, I would like to ask you how, with the UN Resident Coordinator Office, UNDP, and, all, and the Humanitarian Coordination, those big roles, yes. how do you definitely work with the Somali government, uh, whether from regional or federal and all that? How is your work relationship with, with the administrations that exist in Somalia? Authority, regional, federal? Well, I mean, clearly I have an extremely close uh, relation uh, with the uh, authorities. Uh, uh, starting with the federal authorities, uh, I mean, I very much engage, uh, I mean, uh, in uh, the New Deal, in the support of the New Deal, in the support of uh, the compact, uh, the compact and the government national plan for the next coming three years. Uh, I'm engaged in looking at uh, how the United Nations can support uh, I mean, the government to implement uh, this uh, program, meaning by this uh, that all our activities now are aligned behind the priorities uh, of uh, the government. So basically, whatever we are doing in any sector, whether education, rule of law, health, uh, this will be I mean, prepared, agreed, endorsed and implemented uh, in agreement with, uh, I mean, uh, the government. Uh, the same after that, uh, when it comes to the implementation, will apply with uh, regional authorities or local authorities. Okay. So basically, mm -hmm. as a United Nation, whatever we do in the country will be done not only with the consent, uh, but under the lead and the request uh, of the Somali. Uh, authorities and you, the people. You mentioned two key actually areas of, of working relationship, the New Deal and the stabilization. Uh, let me first ask you, how is the New Deal and the compact actually materializing or coming together? 
is the international community actually honoring the pledges and, and coming forward to fulfill those pledges? I mean, when, so far. when, when, when it comes to the New Deal, mm -hmm. there is a number of activities taking place mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, whether it comes to the provision of uh, basic social services, uh, when it comes to issues related to access to justice, when it uh, issues related to, I mean, the support to the constitutional review, mm -hmm. I mean, there are activities, I mean, taking place. Uh, now, obviously, there are some frustration being expressed uh, because the delivery is not as fast uh, as it would be expected. I mean, the task is immense, I mean, in the country. The expectations are extremely high from the people to the government, the government vis-à-vis -vis the aid community, the aid community vis-à-vis -vis the government. Yes. So I, I do believe we acknowledge now today the frustration. We acknowledge that the deliveries are not as fast as uh, expected. Yeah. But uh, we are talking about, uh, I mean, a nation to be rebuilt almost from uh, from scratch. So this will take time, and I also believe that uh, I mean timelines needs to be uh, realistic. So yes, we are working together. Yes, sometimes it is too slow. It is also related. Uh, we should never forget uh, to the overall security situation in the country. I mean, ideally, we need to have much more people. I mean, in the country, in Mogadishu, mm -hmm. but the security environment uh, right. that is not always conducive, uh, I mean, for bringing more people or more support into the country. And meanwhile, mm -hmm. for the delivery of, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, the funding and the fund, you need also system to be put in place, you need an absorption capacity which needs to be built. So hence, I mean, uh, all this, uh, I would say, right. a feeling that right. the process is not as quick uh, as it should be. How is the stabilization coming together? Somalis actually, in terms of stabilization, do not see, in, in relation with the security, they don't see country getting stable for actually now. And, and is the international community actually positive and, and actually encouraging stabilization steps? And how, do they, how are you doing that? I mean, and I, st I mean, the overall trend mm -hmm. is still a positive overall trend. But it is true that uh, there have been a number of uh, setbacks. It mm -hmm. is true that the inse prevailing insecurity is a concerning, worrying factor, which is undermining a number of uh, uh, stabilization uh, activities. Having said that, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, um, the Mogadishu we know today is a completely different Mogadishu uh, than two years ago. You have to look at a certain number of indicators. I mean, one of the most vibrant indicators has been the Somali diaspora. The Somali diaspora had believed, came here, invested, is still here. These are indicator that, uh, I mean, the overall trend is still uh, on the right uh, track. And we are here, I mean, to support it. Uh, and we are here to consolidate it. But again, this will take some time. Definitely. I want to move on with the other role of humanitarian coordinator and, and would like to ask you uh, how do you see the humanitarian situation in Somalia now? Is it, is it improving, getting worse? Where is it going? What is your analysis as, as, as actually? Well, right now, mm -hmm. I mean, there is a worrying trend uh, in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started to ring the alarm bell, mm -hmm. I mean, a few months ago. Okay. We have a certain number of, I would say, uh, troubling similarities uh, mm -hmm. with what happened in 2010. Mm -hmm. I mean, starting with uh, the drought, I mean, a week ago, mm -hmm. the, f uh, the Food Security uh, Nutritional Analysis Unit uh, issued an, a warning saying that uh, the rain in country have been far below uh, average, even f uh, below 50% of the average of the rain. Mm -hmm. So this definitely will have an impact uh, on the harvest. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. this is further exacerbated uh, okay. by the uh, ongoing uh, conflict on offensive in uh, South Central. Okay. It's further exacerbated by the fact uh, that the okay. private business uh, uh, is not uh, moving basic communities mm -hmm. anymore in a number of places 
in uh, South Central okay. is exacerbated by the fact that, that we have uh, soaring uh, prices for basic commodities mm -hmm. and last but not least uh, the resources of the humanitarian community mm -hmm. have significantly decreased uh, I mean this year compared to last year and already last year compared to the year before so if you put all these factors together right. with the current early warning right. yes it is a uh, time to be worried about uh, the unfolding humanitarian uh, uh, situation and crisis, uh, mm -hmm. and it is time today, and I still right. believe it is time, mm -hmm. to act in order to prevent okay. a further deterioration. But we have to be ready in right. the coming months uh, okay. that the situation will certainly become worse, mm -hmm. certainly for the first time since 2012, uh, mm -hmm. more people will be in urgent need of humanitarian assistance and life-saving assistance. All the factors are actually pointing out, as you say, uh, something like 2011 famine could could happen again. Is, is, is that exactly what you're saying or, or something similar? I think uh, the could is correct. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it will happen. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we could can be. still uh, prevent it, mm -hmm. but it could happen if uh, there is no, I would say, uh, adequate response today, right. it could happen if in two, three months time again the dare rain uh, will fail, if uh, the access to the population for basic communities is not uh, improving and right. if the resources are not there. So the, my, 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 my point today is to say right. we have to wake up, mm -hmm. we cannot allow a 2011 scenario okay. to be repeated in country, right. I do believe it would be morally unacceptable, intolerable, and uh, we cannot fail, I mean, the people again. And in addition, if this would happen, it would certainly also undermine, I mean, all the gain uh, um, realized in country when it comes to the peace and state building agenda. Okay. You already mentioned South Central uh, Somalia being the primary focus of, of, of this possibility of uh, actually droughts and famine in Somalia. Are there specific locations in South Central Somalia where it can be definitely dire, where the situation can be really worse? Well, I mean, what we are told today mm -hmm. is that uh, there is a primary concern uh, among the uh, displaced uh, population, so the IDPs, uh, mm -hmm. where the famous uh, threshold uh, for an emergency mm -hmm. uh, have already in, uh, already been reached. Mm -hmm. uh, among them, mm -hmm. we are even talking about, I mean, some of the displaced people here in uh, Mogadishu. Mm -hmm. So you will have, I mean, area more heat uh, than hazard. Mm -hmm. we, we have the agricultural areas uh, mm -hmm. of uh, Bay Bacon, most likely uh, population uh, who are in circle will also suffer more than others, but the IDPs remain also uh, one of the primary concerns of uh, the humanitarian community, which leads to another mm -hmm. I mean, observation. Okay. It's not just a question of access, because many of the displaced people in Mogadishu or in urban center okay. are accessible mm -hmm. uh, for the Somalis, are accessible for the broader aid community. Okay. Uh, I'm coming back to the IDPs, internally displaced people, and there was a talk for resettlement, especially those in Mogadishu and other big cities, to the farmland and where they come from. Is that is, is that something that you are actually approaching now, now, or it's 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 on hold since it, we are actually concerned with the new actually uh, uh, crisis here. The if I, if I look at last year, there have been about 45,000, 50,000 uh, displaced people mm -hmm. who went back uh, I mean, to the place of uh, origin. Right. And many of them have also left uh, I mean, uh, Mogadishu. Right. Now, there have been also a certain number of plans mm -hmm. to resettle I mean, uh, uh, IDPs in places where they are. But for this, uh, you need uh, land allocation, and for this, uh, you need more resources. I have to say that this part of the resettlement of the IDPs uh, mm -hmm. has not made a lot of progress because of a uh, lack of land, because of a uh, lack of resources. Okay. But uh, mm -hmm. the one, they still have been a number, mm -hmm. and especially the one coming 
I mean from rural areas uh, mm -hmm. who have gone back to their place of origin and their return mm -hmm. have been quite success uh, successful. Okay. W one last question and it's going to be aid and how it works in Somalia. Aid effectiveness in Somalia a lot of times is questioned, especially United Nations and, and, and international donors aid coming to Somalia is is, is, is being actually criticized in a lot of ways. On the other hand, the, Turk, the Turkish aid has been actually uh, been getting actually a lot of attention, uh, especially urban areas in Mogadishu and, 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 and other towns. Is there any, you know, change of improving aid effectiveness and how it comes to the ground and how it actually helps the people? I, w I wouldn't t talk about aid effectiveness mm -hmm. per se. I mean, there have been uh, some uh, activities mm -hmm. which have been more visible mm -hmm. uh, for the overall population. I do believe that, uh, for example, the construction of the road here in Mogadishu mm -hmm. and the street lightning has benefited, I mean, to the population and has been seen mm -hmm. as a significant uh, uh, improvement. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, mm -hmm. I mean, um, um, the UN agencies like uh, World, World Health Organization, UNICEF, uh, have uh, vaccinated uh, 4 million children uh, in the country uh, and uh, were engaged uh, with the health authority in a race to prevent, uh, I mean, the spread of uh, the polio. They almost succeeded, but this is not felt and committed the same way, but this is also an indication on how aid has been effective, okay. I mean, to try to slow down the spread of, uh, uh, of the disease. Mm -hmm. So what, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, you have some aid which is extremely important, which has been provided to the population mm -hmm. for many, many years, which is maintained, such as primary health care, okay. which is not felt as visible or as effective anymore right. because it's a given. Right. Uh, UNDP has been actually undertaking a lot of development projects in Somalia and, and it's been there in the ground for, for quite some time. What are the main actually uh, uh, emphasis or the focus right now and, and, and can you please give us a little bit of the successful stories of I UNDP recently. I, I, I think UNDP has been traditionally mm -hmm. in Somalia yes. very much involved mm -hmm. in uh, rule of law activities, mm -hmm. uh, access to justice. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw, I mean, a few months ago, mm -hmm. that uh, some of the program of UNDP, which have been initiated. Mm -hmm. uh, five, six years ago mm -hmm. in Putland, Somaliland mm -hmm. about uh, creating a women bar association, about uh, bringing more women uh, as a judge uh, is uh, today, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, has t today as a result, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you have, uh, 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 you had the first uh, deputy prosecutor as a woman who have been uh, designated uh, in uh, Somaliland, uh, you had a number of uh, uh, women lawyer in uh, Putland, which was not the case before. So this is a direct contribution, uh, I would say, in the rule of law, but also gender equity. I mean, in country, okay. uh, UNDP in um, the coming uh, three years uh, mm -hmm. will not on only pursue and scale up these activities, mm -hmm. but will also more concentrate. Uh, in an other core activity, which is the uh, alleviation or eradication of uh, poverty, we will be involved in important youth uh, and livelihood uh, program and job, job employment program in the country. And beside that, uh, mm -hmm. the last emphasizer uh, mm -hmm. is clearly to support uh, the government and key ministries, uh, okay. I mean, to build uh, their institutional capacity. Great. Yeah, I, I want to conclude uh, during last famine, the Somali diasporas were very actually took a, an active role in terms of, of emergency response. Uh, what would you like to say this time to, to the Somalis to help themselves? 
I mean, no, number one, I, I do believe it's absolutely key that, uh, I mean, the remittances uh, and the lifeline uh, uh, for the, the remittances uh, uh, remain uh, open. I mean, more than ever, I mean, uh, the fellow relative of the people in the diaspora and uh, of, of the people being here, I mean, are in need of uh, support. Um, I think we will go through difficult time, so more than ever, I mean, the attention, the focus and the support, uh, I mean, needs to remain. Thank you very much, Mr. Friedblas. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you.